this dissertation stuff is really killing me. Is nothing going my way at the mo- Wait. Is that? <gasps> After 10 years, I can't believe it's actually happening. Please tell me Square Enix didn't drop the ball on this one. Ellis from Quench Gaming here, and this is Final Fantasy XV. Okay, before I start this review, I'll be candid with you guys. All I knew of Final Fantasy prior to playing this game was its blatantly oxymoronic title, its convoluted plot lines, so Zack Fenner's Cloud, Cloud was also a Genova clone, Hojo was Sephiroth's dad, and its choice of uh, <coughs> colorful character designs. <laughs> So, as you can tell, unlike many others who had shadowed this project since its inception as Final Fantasy Vs. 13 in 2006, even after watching some gameplay footage and trailers, I still had no idea what I was in for. Backstreet Boys, is that you? However, to my immediate delight, I found out that in lieu of each installment following a set overarching story, each edition in the main franchise follows a new adventure. What I can say is that at its very best, Final Fantasy XV is a revolution in both gameplay and character interaction that could change the way we play JRPGs and RPGs in general. That said... At its worst, it's a perpetual comedy of errors that draws you in with its gorgeous open world landscapes, only to throw in a bait and switch partway through the narrative and have you trudge down Endless linear corridors at a snail's pace for the remainder of the game, like some shoehorned M. Night Shyamalan plot twist. But I digress. For all of its shortcomings, Final Fantasy XV succeeds where most AAA titles don't. The gameplay is addictive and adaptable, so it almost always feels fresh no matter the context. You'd think that having only two primary buttons for attacking would be fraught with boredom, but it just isn't. People complain that the camera can play up quite a bit during combat, but I didn't really find this at all to be a game breaker. Arguably, to me at least, the most important factor is that I actually gave a shit about the characters. Well, most of them. The main cast is made up of Noctis an initially annoying and self-absorbed piece of pampered royalty. But, akin to a good Polaroid, after a slow character development process, he actually serves to be a pretty neat protagonist. Speaking of Polaroids, we have Prompto, a skirt-chasing photographer that, on the onset of the game, I believed I was bound to despise, simply due to his overly chipper demeanor. But what starts out as your harmless comic relief finishes as a person with heartfelt intent. In the end, he's just a kid who rose up from the gutter and managed to befriend the son of the most powerful man in Lucis. When you dig you deep into his like character, Prompto just wants to belong. Next up is Ignis. He's a classic, posh, studious, glasses-pushing anime chap who acts as the team's master strategist. He didn't really resonate with me at all, initially. That was until a certain section of the narrative where all I wanted to do was bundle him up and just keep him safe so much that I lost sight of my current objective. Come up with a new recipe. <laughs> and the final member of NSYNC is... Oh, how, how do you say this? Um, Gladius? Go... No, Gladi... Gladiolus? Oh, Gladiolus. Gladiolus. Honestly, he's the most forgettable to me. He has a few good one-liners here and there, but otherwise he only really works within the confines of the group. 
as well as your bare essentials combat, every main character also has their own activity that they engage with. You can choose to use fishing spots with Noctis and without sounding absolutely ridiculous, it's by far the best fishing I've ever played in a game. It uses a pressure system, where if you pull too hard on the rod, the line snaps and the fish gets away. Oh, we boys, we got one on the line. He's a big one, but ain't nothing I can. You also need to make sure that you direct it in the right path, otherwise the fish will also get away. Yeah! It's simple, but effective. Prompto's activity, on the other hand, involves taking a copious amount of selfies. Of which he takes... But, it goes a long way in continuing to make the world and characters feel authentic. Ignis will occasionally cook up some gourmet meals for the gang whenever they stop off at a campsite, and these can have different stat affecting boosts, like health, regeneration, or attack boosts, and the food actually looks really, really nice. And once again, Gladiolus being the most dull of the troop is a survivor? Eh, it's not much of an activity, just an excuse to make him sound rough and rugged. Uh, yeah, whatever, he'll occasionally pick up items like potions and elixirs that'll help. Big whoop. There is one other character who really, really made an impression on me. See, I do like characters who are unsubtle with their intentions and agendas, but this guy just oozes belligerent vibes. His voice is like a smooth oil entering every orifice of your being. Okay, enough of that. As I was saying, for what few characters make frequent additions to the plot, they are good fun and you do get attached to them as the story reaches its epicenter. However, there are characters that, short of being totally uninteresting and used as good old-fashioned plot device fodder, seem like they could have had so much more potential if the narrative had spent more time on them at all, like developing their characters or having them appear in important scenes. I did some digging up after I'd finished the game and realised that a lot of the story is hidden in these exclusive DVDs and movies and animes like Brotherhood and Kingsglaive, but I don't have time for that, like, you know, I just, I want to get to the good story when I play the game, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my third year doing my dissertation. I mean, I'm already failing that, I don't have time. The game also suffers from a large amount of miscommunication in gameplay. I don't know if it's just me who suffered with this, but I didn't realise until about 16 hours in that the royal arms that you unlock as you proceed throughout the game actually drain your health while you use them, and I didn't figure this out until I used a tutorial that told me this. So, the whole time I was playing, I was losing health while I was fighting these monsters, I'm like, why am I losing health? What the, like... A spellbinding musical score can handle the emotional depth of a game without even needing dialogue. That's why games like Journey are so beautiful. Because the sullen sound of a lone violin on the backdrop of an empty canvas landscape can in seconds create a powerful moment of dull heartache that you just couldn't get from traditional dialogue. Thankfully, Final Fantasy XV also sports some superb orchestral compositions, courtesy of, I hope I'm saying this right, Yoko Shimimura. As soon as you load up the game for the first time, you're greeted by the main theme, Somnus. It's a stunningly illuminating and beautiful piece of music, and it really sets the somber note of the journey you'll soon travel upon. I could honestly go on about musical scores all day, in particular this one, but for this instance, I'll just give you a thumbs up. Well done, Mrs. Shimimura. Like I said earlier at the beginning of the review, this is the first Final Fantasy game I've ever played and completed, and so I've nothing to compare it to in the franchise. But you know what? I absolutely enjoyed it, and I would venture as to say that it is my game of the year. Now don't get me wrong, it does have its flaws, but every game does, and at least it didn't turn out like Duke Nukem Forever. I think the most important thing Square Enix have done here is build a foundation, and laid a groundwork for future titles to follow. 
Say, if Kingdom Hearts 3 is a more refined and sleek version of this, I'd be over the moon. And so, Quench Magazine Gaming does hereby bestow on Final Fantasy XV an 8 out of 10. Well done Square Enix, and best of luck with your future titles. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video review of Final Fantasy XV. It's our first attempt at this, and so I hope that as Square Enix has laid an impressive foundation to continue, we can as well. If you want to read more of our take on gaming or just about anything, we cover music, film, TV, travel, food, etc, etc, just visit cardiffstudentmedia.co.uk forward slash quench and stay tuned for some more groovy reviews and videos from yours truly.